everyone, this is Rob Roy, and welcome to the LA Wave Options U.S. Market Update. As we do each and every week, we show you on the screen the list of stocks that will be featured in this video. And as a quick reminder, if there's a particular stock you're interested in, you can go directly to it using the Chapters feature on this recording. All right, so let's take a look at the market. Uh, we did have some economic news uh, to uh, talk about this week. Uh, we highlighted this last week, and Wednesday was a big day of economic news, starting off with the CPI report that happened before the market opened, and it came in tamer than expected. I was talking to people uh, during Trade Finder about how this uh, was going to affect the markets, uh, whether it was hotter or tamer, uh, and that came in uh, quite a bit tamer, and the market took off to the upside. Well, then Chairman Powell came out for the press conference. It was one of those two day meetings, so the second day. Uh, had a press conference and he kind of poured a little bit of water uh, onto the rally where he said that uh, maybe one rate cut. Well, the Fed fund futures following the CPI report had already factored in two rate cuts, an 80% chance of two rate cuts, one in September, one in December. And he kind of brought that back down to expectations of only one. So that kind of stopped the rally in its tracks. If we go back and look at the chart, you'll see that we finished kind of near the low of the day, even though we did gap up. We had this little expanding triangle, so we had the gap up. That was the breakout from the triangle, and we've held pretty well over the past couple of days. So at least we haven't gone back and given much back uh, from that move to the upside. It just gives us a 55% extension on the wave five. Uh, as you know, if you've been watching the recordings, if you haven't, go back and watch them. We have a zigzag pattern as well as the wave five that are giving us target prices up around 550. So the C wave extension on the zigzag is right there at 550 as well. Uh, and that level should be hit uh, before we get to the election. So uh, we'll see how the rest of the economic data comes in over the months, but for now, uh, a move to the upside. Now, if we look at the TNX, looking at the 10 year for interest rates, you can see interest rates have dropped significantly. Uh, we were down here at a 50% correction. Now we're down at 55%. Kind of thought we might see a little more follow through uh, to the upside today with the fact that rates went down again, but we didn't. You can argue that just consolidating that big gap up from Wednesday uh, is st still uh, bullish, uh, but I would have rather seen a little bit more of a tick to the upside on rates moving lower today. We still have to remember that this is a qualified wave five to the upside. And as long as we have that, we have to keep that caution uh, in the mix, especially when we look at the dollar. And the dollar has just kind of hung in there. Uh, with rates moving down, we would have expected to see a bit of a move down in the dollar. Now we know the EU, the European Union has already cut rates. So perhaps we're getting some money coming into the US dollar internationally. I think that's what's going on. So perhaps uh, a bit of money coming in from the EU uh, because we didn't get a move back down. We had this one bar down here on the wave four that put us right at the 61.8% FIB level. Uh, but as long as we can stay in this trading range on the dollar, and as long as we stay in a trading range on the TNX, I'm going to bring that back up because we don't want to see this go too far to the downside. If we start to really tank on rates, you might think, oh, that's a good thing. But that's also a signal that we're getting really poor economic news. And I still stand by my comments that I don't think the Fed wants to do anything prior to the election. I don't think they want to cut rates. I don't think they want to raise rates. I think that's why Powell came out and tried to talk the market into just one rate cut. I think he wanted to take that September uh, cut that the Fed fund futures was pricing off the table. So as long as we stay in these ranges, I think we're okay here uh, as far as uh, the dollar and rates. Let's take a look at the VIX because we are back down uh, just below that 1250 level, closing today right above that 1250 level. Uh, but we did tick a little below it, closing below it yesterday. Uh, and I think we're just going to kind of stay in this range. As a reminder, we had this uh, another uh, expanding triangle. We broke out to it. We hit resistance at 15. We came back down, tested to the point of the breakout, all classic Elliott Wave corrective triangle stuff. Uh, and now we're just kind of moving back and forth around this 1250 level. 
I think that's kind of where we're going to stay. I wouldn't be surprised if we just slowly move to the downside. I don't think we're going to see any big moves lower uh, on the VIX. But uh, if we rise just a bit on the S&P and get up towards that 550 level, we've had levels on the VIX down around 10 and lower. So I don't think this necessarily means that we're going to have a sprint back to the upside. We'll have to have a poor uh, inflationary report uh, before we see a big move back up in the VIX, in my opinion. All right, let's go ahead and move over to the rest of the markets. We'll start with the Dow uh, that had that big move to the downside uh, at the end of May, which was a, a bit significant uh, because not only did we move kind of vertically down, but we had these two little gaps uh, to the downside here, uh, creating that A wave uh, of the zigzag. And I'm of the opinion that this wave five is complete. It did hit that FIB level at 38.2. We did have the corrective move back to the previous four. Uh, and I think we're kind of trying to find our way now on the Dow as far as where's the next impulse pattern. So I think if you're a trader of the Dow, you kind of have to sit on your hands and wait and see. We do still have this qualified zigzag pattern, which did hit right at the 61.8% on the B wave. So it wouldn't surprise me to see a slow crawl to the downside on the Dow because the market is still back to anything tech-based that says AI uh, is where the market wants to be and anything else uh, is pretty much meaningless at this point in time. Uh, now let's move over to the queues. We've been talking about the queues quite a bit, uh, especially during TradeFinder. And this past week uh, in TradeFinder, we talked about this big gap up here. Uh, and we do Trade Finder every single Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you haven't registered for Trade Finder, you can do it uh, with the link that you see on your screen now. It's free. We talk the markets, we look for trade ideas, and we have a live QA. And it's a great community. They ask great questions, and you can interact uh, with each other as well. So, uh, if you haven't registered for it, please do so. Join us next week. Uh, it's pretty cool being able to do it during market hours. So this past week, we were talking about this big move up here uh, that we had on the queues, and then we have continued higher uh, through the rest of the week. So you can see that move up on Tuesday, then the gap up on Wednesday, and then follow through Thursday and Friday. And holy cow, look where we are now, 192% extension on that wave five. I've mentioned in the past I can count on both hands the number of times since I've been trading LA Wave, which is 2001, that we've had a move to the 261.8% FIB level. It has happened, so I'm not going to say it can happen, uh, but I've been wondering if this five is going to move up to that level or are we going to relabel this five on the queues and move to a wave three? Uh, I think interest rates are going to tell us a tale there. If we stay in that trading range that I talked about, I think we could perhaps see the end of this wave five. But if rates continue lower, then I think that five relabels to a three. But we're not there yet, so we'll have to wait and see. But there's no argument that we are just a bit overbought on the queues right now. So we have this gap that hasn't been filled yet, and we've continued to move higher and their separation from the 10-day moving average. So all the rules that I talked to you about week after week, no security in any time frame gets too far away from the 10-day moving average, and gaps get filled. 94% uh, of gaps get filled according to our AI data. That doesn't mean they all get filled, uh, but we never know when. It, this could be a way off into the future that it gets filled, but at some point in time, we have to remember this gap and that the likelihood is that would, it will get filled at some point in time. Now we look at the IWM, and if you're a believer that uh, the small caps are an indication of risk tolerance for the market, as some people are, then the fact that we broke 200 today uh, is not something that's real comforting to you. Uh, and it looks like by the fact that we broke 200, but you know one of the other rules that we talk about all the time is uh, one day doesn't mean anything. You have to have a second day, a follow through, or confirmation day, and so we'll see if on Monday we get a confirmation day to the downside on the IWM. And if that occurs, then uh, we are highly likely to move down and test that 190 level, which has been support for so long uh, on the IWM, trading in this range between 190 and 210. So those are the things that we want to look at there on the markets. All right, let's go into the Bitcoin world, uh, the crypto world. 
Uh, and we did have a move down. I did a uh, live show on the Hub Financial channel. And if you're watching this and you haven't gone over to the Hub Financial channel, please do so. Same thing here on YouTube, but Hub Financial. Uh, and go through and like that and subscribe, and you'll be notified every time we do one of those live shows on the Hub Financial channel. We mostly focus on cryptos, but we focus on the rest of the market as well. And our crypto expert told us uh, that this is all normal. And he actually showed a really cool chart of an inverse head and shoulders pattern on Bitcoin. And they feel like uh, we're about near the bottom uh, on this move of Bitcoin and we're likely to turn and talk back, move back to the upside. I'm gonna just give you a couple others real quick that weren't in the list, but they're bonus. Uh, Ethereum, we know that we had this big move up in anticipation of that uh, Ethereum ETF getting approved, it did. Uh, now we have President Biden who originally said he was gonna veto this if it was passed. Uh, and then President, or Vice, uh, past President Trump came out and said he was gonna take uh, donations from Bitcoin, and now Biden's saying the same thing. Uh, he was originally going to veto this, and now it's okay if you donate to his campaign through Bitcoin. So which way is it, President Biden? So anyway, don't want to get into politics here. We talk about the markets, not politics, but um, Ethereum has retraced about half of that big vertical move, uh, and that's a point where if Bitcoin is going to turn around in that inverse head and shoulders pattern, Ethereum could do so as well. Coinbase here has been very interesting because without a big move to the upside in Bitcoin uh, or Ethereum, we've still been kind of trending to the upside here, staying above the 50-day moving average, even though we did close right at the 10-day moving average today. Uh, but we had this wave four right at 38.2% level. Now we wanna see if on Coinbase, we can move up and break this level here where the previous wave three was. So just a couple of bonus charts to throw in there. Let's take a look at silver. Uh, you guys reminded me that I left silver out last week and that was because that recording got a little bit long. Uh, but here we are uh, with silver and we're just trending right at this B wave correction. You can see it's at a 53% correction. So right around a 50% correction. I'm really uh, a little bit surprised here that with rates moving down, we haven't seen more of a move back up uh, on SLV. Uh, but as long as we hold in this area of the B wave correction that coincides with that A wave top and the wave three top, uh, this is okay. This is constructive. If we start to break below this B, B wave level and we break below where I've drawn this line here, which isn't too far below here, then you have to start to think that the zigzag pattern becomes disqualified as well as the entire five wave pattern being complete. And since that's less than 100% extension, we would be looking at a move all the way back down to the previous four. We're not there yet, but we're awfully close. So we need to watch this very closely at the beginning of next week. If we can't mount some sort of a bounce here in the metals at the beginning of the week, and we start to break below this level, then we have to look at a move lower uh, in that uh, uh, SLV chart back towards that previous four. And that would be the metals telling us they're not a believer in this uh, uh, easing cycle, and that maybe we get some inflationary data uh, that's a little bit hotter than what the CPI was moving forward. So something to keep an eye on there uh, on the SLV. USO, talking about oil, I've talked about this a lot in my travels. I drive at night, um, so the market's not open. Normally, there's less traffic. I've been commenting on how much traffic there's been uh, on the road. It doesn't seem like the uh, uh, average consumer has stopped the travel. We're getting ready to move into the all-important vacation season in the summer. Uh, uh, but I do have to say that on my last trip uh, overnight, the traffic was noticeably less uh, than where there'd been. Uh, we had this move back to the upside, noting here that USO, uh, if Elliot himself was here, would be showing this chart uh, just uh, exclusively because this is as classic as it gets in LA wave corrective pattern. We had this uh, zigzag pattern that came down to the 100% level. Uh, and the rules are if you're gonna go to an extended level, which would be the 161.8% level, you go back up, test the previous level first, then you move down exactly what oil did. So it hit that 161.8% level. And then we've had a little bit of a move back to the upside. And for now, we're holding above the 50-day moving average. So that zigzag is complete. It's done. 
we also had a complex C wave uh, where we had this expanding triangle that broke to the downside. And when you get a triangle breakout, you know that we go back to the midpoint. We've done that as well. So that's where I was saying Elliot would be using this as a perfect example of all of his rules. Uh, the zigzag did exactly what it was supposed to do. We had a complex C wave and the, uh, the triangle did exactly what it was supposed to do. So we're done with all that. Now we have to see where oil goes from here. Are we starting a new impulse pattern to the upside in oil? Is it gonna go into a trading range? We're gonna have to give this one a few more days to see. But for now, uh, just like the Dow, you'd sit on your hands and say, we need a little bit more information before we put a directional trade on there. All right, now let's move into the stocks of interest. And we have to start with GameStop. We talked about that. We actually did a separate video uh, on GameStop last week on whether or not uh, the company GameStop had put kind of uh, uh, the kibosh on uh, uh, Roaring Kitty. Uh, I really feel like he wanted another run. He posted his account. Uh, he had tons of shares uh, and call options. And on this move to the downside, when GameStop surprised everybody and reported their earnings early on Friday rather than waiting till Tuesday, uh, he showed up with bandages everywhere. Uh, but people that track his call options noted that there's been a significant sell-off in the exact strike price that he owns. Now, whether or not those were his or not, we don't know. And I'm not speculating on whether or not he was selling or not. It's just coincidental that the exact strike that was being sold is the strike that he owns. But it seems like uh, this move to the upside here uh, that I was looking for didn't occur this time. Uh, we've been going kind of sideways here on GameStop. And a quick reminder that every single month uh, this year, we are doing a giveaway of our level three subscription. And that's our impulse strategy that's AI based. So it has a great track record. You can go to our website at ewotrader.com and look at it. Our volatility strategy, which is breakouts of triangles, and our time strategy, which is an income-based sideways strategy for stocks that have had a big drop, they spike the IV and the puts. So we sell a short-term put, buy a long-term put, and realize that income from time decay and a drop in IV. Now, last week I did a special uh, where I posted a photo uh, and said, where is this? And we're doing a special giveaway there. Well, I made a mistake. I posted uh, the wrong picture. I took two pictures, but the picture that I showed didn't really clearly show the house that I was focused on. Uh, it is in the Bahamas. Some of you said in Nassau, but when we docked there, they were very specific to say you're in New Providence in the Bahamas, not Nassau. Uh, but the house was Chuck Norris's house. So Chuck Norris's house in New Providence. So I wanted to let you know before we did the drawing that anyone that mentioned the Bahamas or anyone that mentioned that it was Chuck Norris's house you are in the special drawing, and I'll announce next week who the winner was of that. But the big drawing is all you have to do is post a comment under this video, and you're in the drawing each and every uh, month for uh, the free giveaway. And it's worth thousands of dollars. You can go and look at our website and see that. So GameStop is kind of just consolidating here, uh, and I think I would be very cautious. I'm always cautious about trading in this uh, space. If you happen to time it right, uh, you can do okay, but most people lose here. Uh, and uh, if uh, Roaring Kitty's uh, sheet was correct, then uh, he's struggling right now as well. So I wanted to go through and, uh, and clear that up and talk about it. Let's talk about Tesla. Uh, and you can see that uh, we're trying to break out of this triangle. But same thing here. We're following the rules. We had the breakout yesterday. We came back and tested that point of the breakout uh, in the triangle today, and we closed right on it. So there's a tiny percent chance that this was a false breakout. So we have to watch that next week. Or it's just classic. You break out, you test the breakout, and then you go. But I still maintain my stance on Tesla uh, that we need to break above this 200 level. You know that uh, Elon was happy because the shareholders approved his pay package for a second time. But he doesn't get it until that judge in Delaware says, okay, uh, we'll... Uh, agree with it. So there's still one more step before he gets that pay package. Uh, but for right now, even though we have this triangle here, you still have to, one, be aware that that could be a false breakout. And secondary, let's let it turn and break back to the upside if that's the way it's going to go and be a little more cautious and wait for a break above 200 
before you go long Tesla. If we break to the downside, well, we'll look at that next week and see if maybe we're coming down to test this low. But for now, we're okay. NVIDIA, everybody knows about NVIDIA. We have gone through and had the uh, <clears throat> stock split. This, forget that, that's a bad data quote from the uh, exchange. Uh, it takes them a while to work through things. Uh, and the software uses the data from uh, the top uh, data exchange. So that's why some people call that a fat finger trade. They'll get that worked out and that'll go away. Uh, what you want to look at is the regular pattern here. So I just wanted to be clear that this is not the software from Hub's issue. This is a data provider issue. Uh, but we have turned and moved back to the upside. I cautioned you on the first day or two post split um, that some people will sell. That's what occurred here. And now we're getting the uh, renewed buy-in that normally happens post-split on a stock. So NVIDIA looks poised to move back to the upside. It's in a wave three. We want to see the adjustment in the ADX or the DMI, and that looks very constructive. The ADX is getting a little high, but it still looks pretty strong. So I think NVIDIA looks to continue to go higher here. Well, we just had the exact same scenario now come out in Broadcom, the reported earnings after the close last night. So we had the big move to the upside. Uh, same thing, they announced a big stock split as well. So those of you that had wanted to short uh, NVIDIA on their big move, I cautioned you that nobody really wants to share, sell the shares before the split. So I would say the same thing here, even though we have a big gap up and separation from the 10 day moving average, that stock split announcement changes the game. I would expect to see the exact same thing out of Broadcom that we saw in NVIDIA. Maybe a little banging and filling, but mostly just consolidating, moving sideways. And same scenario once they hit the split date and trade post split, there'll be a little bit of selling for a day or two, and then it turns and moves back to the upside. So uh, I figured some people would be interested in what was going on with AVGO. Now, even the financial networks have been talking about is SMCI next in line. To announce a stock split. Uh, we're up here uh, near that thousand dollar level. We came down. Now we are in a qualified five wave to the downside pattern. We have to keep that in mind. But uh, in my opinion, this five wave pattern does not play out unless we see that tick up on the TNX. If rates tick back up and it will take some poor inflationary data to cause that to happen, in my opinion, um, then well, we would look for a move to the downside. Without that, I think maybe SMCI is poised to move back up to a thousand, stay in this trading range, uh, and then we'll see uh, at their next earnings report if they come out and announce a stock split. Especially since they're in the S and P now, I think it's uh, kind of likely uh, that they may do that. So I think that's something that you want to keep an eye on uh, on uh, SMCI. So I wanted to bring that up. It did have a big move up yesterday, uh, a little bit back down today, but held the 50-day moving average. I think there's other people thinking along the same lines as I am that maybe they're next in line for the big stock split announcement. So maybe people are uh, buying ahead of that. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. So that covers off a lot of information this week. Have a great weekend and look forward to talking to you again soon. Take care, everybody. If you like these recordings, I'd like to invite you to join our new Trade Finder Live, where each and every week we do a live webinar where we talk about the market, but we also go a little more in depth into the technical analysis system that we utilize to forecast where the market's likely going to go, and also to identify trading opportunities. Get your free subscription today. Take care, everybody.